Welcome back guys, Ryan here from the London Craftsman and today we are fitting three jobs on the site today but we are in the front room and as you can see here we're doing sort of like a corner media unit and this isn't going to be a comprehensive video of how I fit, how I do this, how I do that it's just an overview of bits going in just because I haven't got the time really or the space, we're just trying to get as much done as we can we've only got two possibly three days to get all this work done um so we're just unloading the van getting things ready i'm putting the bearers down and the carcasses in while john and sean are unloading the van and getting them into position so we've got this corner unit here so as you can see this side here that's going to butt up against this one as you can see the little notch so I've put my bearers down already and I've done a little notch here. Don't worry about that gap because we've got another ledge to go on the top. So as long as the front edge is nice, that's all that matters because we've got another 18 mil to cover this. Trim in that position. And then now I'm just gonna be putting bearers down on the floor here. 1.6 across. Um, again, two, one at the back, one at the front hectic in this house because it's quite small and tight and let's move into the kitchen so the kitchen we've got um, this space to work with and the customer is just um, doing a little bit of filling last minute filling they just removed this radiator um, yesterday which is quite handy so we can get all three jobs fitted all at the same time and not have to come back this is what we've got here um, it's a T-section for it, ready to go. And just bring the materials up. And then up the stairs. In the kiddies' bedroom, we've got this space here. And we're filling up the entire space. So it's a bit of a weird angled piece. But again, two sets of two bearers there. I don't know why we've got two sets up here. One should be in the kitchen. John and Sean are just bringing materials up, just getting it ready. We've got a dust sheet down on the floor, ready to go. And yes, yeah, it's all go, go, go at the moment. The easy part is bringing everything in and putting the carcasses together and the bearers. The slow part is getting trims done. This is what the unit upstairs is meant to look like. Something along those lines. I think the design may have been changed. They were so slight where the doors come down. This is an old drawing, but we just keep all our revisions. Um, so yeah, I'll come back once I've got a bit more progress on this one because I, I'm just going to concentrate in this room today. Floating shelves above afterwards, just because we customer hasn't let us know known where the positions are. And we haven't got any space over that side to do it. So just got to wait for the customer on that one. So I'm going to crack on, put the bearers down, get that unit in position and uh, get some progress done. Right, so these bearers are down. About to get the two units together. Going to get put this one in place. Before I do, if you have a look on this side, this side panel runs all the way down and it's fixed. And we made it this way because we didn't want to put an end panel on and it's part of the unit right now but we've left it long to scribe at the bottom so i need to take the measurement from the top of the bearers down to the floor both sides and transfer that from the underside of the unit down and cut this to length before i then try it in place once it's in place and i know it butts into the corner nice and tight without any tweaking i can then work out where my socket goes because ultimately i don't know if this wall is square I may have to pull the unit in, I might have to move this unit over, who knows yet. So first things first, cut the end panel to suit that, get it in place. Once I'm happy, we'll work out the socket. So there we go, that is the unit now in place. You can see the actual cut, nice and tight. Um, the unit is nice and square up against each other. It had to go in this rebate at the same time, so it was a bit of a squeeze getting it in that corner, but we managed it. Um, we got this nice and tight still, so that hasn't come away. Remember, this is gonna get covered with the ledge 
and this joint is gonna get closed up. By the time we put two pieces of ledges on, we can screw from underside and um, keep that unit together at the top. Um, we also need to fix the carcasses down to the bearers, but before we do that, I'm literally gonna just take measurements of the socket, which is down there, so they have access to the socket in that corner. And then we can start building up from there. All right, so progress trek. Um, everything's screwed down now. We've got the socket cut out. It's a little bit wonky, their socket's wonky. But I've cut mine straight. I need to sand up the edges. Um, we always leave 30 mil below. That's on purpose because you always get a hard bit of the cable. Um, and if you don't, then you can't push the plug all the way in. Um, they were happy with just the hole. So that's absolutely fine rather than mounting the socket on the backing. We've got our drawers in. Can you see they're within a rebated part? So this shelf is 21 mil deeper. You can see down that end. So when we put our fascias on, they're gonna look flush with this part of the framework. Um, and we've got the uh, finger pull um, fascias and little mini doors. The little mini doors are going in here. One, two, and one in there, I believe. And this corner unit's gone in. So that is completely flush of here and here because we've made this top overhang by 21 mil and that's what we allow for an 18 mil door with a three mil gap. Flush here and flush here. So when the door sits within, it's flush with the actual ledge and the frame itself. This is an inset door because the door is inset within the frame or the carcass and it's been hung on this side. This door here, we're gonna have a little return here 100 mil top and bottom. We didn't do that just yet, just because we knew we had to get this adjustable shelf in. And we're probably just gonna put enough just to put a mount the hinge onto. And then this hinge um, is just gonna be fixed directly to this side of that door. And this door here is gonna be an overlay door because it's got to sit over this part of the frame. These little doors are on. Just need a little bit of adjusting. You can see the hinges just about worked. And they're quite cool. And I like the way the green matches or sets off the birch. They go really well together. And we are on the fascias now. And the fascias are going in between that little lip there and this lip here. And I've simply put 30 mil screws um, into my fascias. Something as small as this, you only need two screws, or I only use two. And put my 30 mil screws through, three drill um, first with a three mil drill bit. Um, make sure you set you, you equal your screws so they're not just placed randomly. We just go sort of like half of the height and the 50 mil in. Put the screw through so it's just about sticking out two mil. And then I need a three mil gap above, so all I simply do when I've got two hands is I'll put a three mil packer up against that side and a three mil packer here and here. Push it up into the correct place, give it a tap, and it should mark my fascias. I could then just really slightly pre-drill those, or if not, I can then just open the drawer and line those little prongs. Most likely I'm just gonna line the prongs back up and screw it up. It's an easy way of lining up your fascia, being able to pull the drawer out at the same time and screw it back up again so it's perfectly centered. So I'm gonna go on and finish that and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. So fascias are on now. You may need a little bit of a tweak in the gaps, but I'm generally happy with those. And we got the doors on. There's two different types of hinges on these doors. As you can see there, here this door overhangs this carcass. So that is a over um, lay hinge. Um, so that will just overlay the carcass, a full overlay. This door here is an inset. So an inset hinge is the one with the big kick or the dog's leg, the biggest one you can get. That's a full inset. Um, so that means the door can sit within the carcass itself. And you can see it sitting within the post and the ledge. And you can see why we've stepped this bottom in 21 mil compared to the top now. You can see the detail. 
So the ledge is flush with the door, but the door sails past the carcass. And this door here is an inset as well, as you can see it's within the framework itself. So decent progress, we're at about two o'clock. Thing is left to do, side panel there, ledge, ledge, plinth, plinth. Touch up the fascias and the doors because they've got a little bit grubby. And also last thing before we finish up is edge. Once we've doubled this up, this ledge is gonna be 36 mil. We're then just gonna put some edging um, on the front so you don't see the stripes to make it look like a solid lump of birch. And then we'll be on our way. So I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay, so we're back on day two. We've got decent progress. And today I'm gonna to be just cracking on with the um, shelves to get them ready for John to drill out while I'm just doing cheeks and plinths, etc. John can be marking out the lines and uh, getting the SDS drill ready um, for drilling. So as you can see, we've got our Dewalt laser level um, set up and uh, it's magnetized to the corner bead of the window. The customer wants the floating shelves to start 900 from the ceiling as the first one, both sides. And so then you've got three, so one, two, three. So we've worked out 900, the thickness of the shelves, you know, and we've worked out our calculations to make each one um, exactly the same, all the spacings. So I've marked those out um, and we've used the laser level to ping the laser across. It's not in line at the moment, we've just done two lines, one, two, and also one against that back wall, which we're gonna rub out after. And we've done that to all three heights. So we've got three lines, one, two, and three. Then we can do away with the laser level and um, move the laser level over to this side and do the same, one, two, one, two, one, two. Once we've got all those, we'll just get our straight edge and uh, do what you see here. Just draw the lines in. Um, because we need to put three floating shelf brackets within those lines. Unknown right now where they're going to go because we need to cut the floating shelves to length and we don't know in what position they're going to be in the length. So we're going to crack on with that right now and uh, um, just juggle bits and pieces here and there. Here we go. Pins are in, some fixings were better than others, just because it's just down to the luck of the gods, isn't it, with the um, adjustable pegs, how they fix into the wall. There are a few techniques, obviously, you can use a resin, use um, threaded rod. I tend to use the 110 mil pegs that you can buy um, online with the um, raw plugs and the washers. I took some washers off some, because I got some better fixings on some pegs, so I removed the washers on some that I didn't get the greatest fixings on but ultimately they are pretty tight and John is fixing this side now and uh, shelves all cut all these shelves here six are gonna slide on so we're just about to get those on now and the floating shelves are in as you can see they were a bit of a pain in the butt just because um, the plasterboard felt like it was blowing out as we were drilling through, even though we were really delicate and slow with the SDS drill. And the brick was terrible behind, really terrible. Sometimes we got a little bit of mortar, um, which loosened them up. So we had to sort of um, work our magic to get those nice and tight and in place and looking nice and level. Tiny bit of filler work, just where some bits chipped out, but like I said, nothing you can really do about that. So really chuffed about those. And I will show you progress quickly. This was put together yesterday, assembled. We did have it on the bearers, but we decided to, when we lined it up, we decided that I had to shift over to the left. So what we're doing is um, cutting back this skirting to be able to allow us to move the unit to the left, then that will go in. Fixings, trims, then we'll be on our way there. And Sean is just cutting some trims out here with the old plungy. This one is decent progress. 
And uh, where we're fitting the trims, we're just keying up those edges to get some nice, decent glue, some mitre bond on those trims, because we've got trims that are actually um, face frame trims glued onto the front rather than inset. So decent progress there. Sean's just cutting bits and pieces. As soon as we've done the trims, we'll just hang the doors and that'll be that done, apart from touch-ups. So all I'm going to concentrate on now, going back to this unit, are these two pieces, which is the smaller ledge. Smaller ledge is for the alcove, bigger ledge is for the longer run. And then we've got one plinth, another plinth's outside, and then we've got this side cheek to go. Side cheek will just get cut to fit into that space, cut to length and cut to the front of the door in line with the front of the door and around the um, skirting at the bottom. So lots to do, just gonna crack on. So we're on the ledges now, and as you can see, I've got my little piece cut out. I already um, did my reference marks. As you can see, I just scribbled it on this inner ledge. Everything I needed to know, length, cut out size, all that sort of stuff. And I transferred it onto this piece and cut it out with the plunge saw. And I'll just slot in like so. And there we go to double it up. We've got a bit of lipping going on the front here. So once that is um, screwed down from underneath, we will edge or lip this with an iron on edging. Um, other things that we've got on and done is this plimp detail at the bottom. Yeah, so we finished this. And we finish this all the way across and one trim here as well. Just to finish that corner off, off nicely. And to do that, to scribe around our skirting, we use one of these profile tools. So we're just going to crack on and finish the ledge off in exactly the same way as we did this ledge. And then we'll nearly be there. Right, so nearly at the finishing, um, finishing line now, just a few little touch-ups to go. I've gone over all the green paint with the um, Cova Plus, which is this ready mixed um, vinyl mat because we use that paint. I am using this decorator's varnish, which is quite handy for doing small jobs. And all it's gonna do is stop the dirt and the dust getting in the mat finish and making them grubby instantly. They've just had a little skim 20 minutes ago with green paint just to get rid of all the dirt. Um, because it's matte, it just takes any dirt whatsoever. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this out in the tray and use one of my purdies. I know they looks quite big, but it's the only nice clean purdy brush that I've got. Other than that, I've got a little um, dial one. Probably give that one a little go first. I masked up all the surround so I don't get any of the varnish on the edges. And all I'm going to do is give it one quick hit on the front face and within the handles. And that's going to give it a finish, a matte finish, so it's not going to change the sheen in any way. It should look exactly the same as you can see now. Because I do like the green matte finish, so it's no sheen. Looks a bit classy. So let's go around and see progress in the other rooms. <laughs> In the kitchen dining room, Sean's just dusting out all the spaces for little touch-ups. Doors are on, customers are happy to put their own handles on. Um, we did ask them where they wanted the handles and they don't have them. We do have spares, but they were happy to just do it themselves another day. So this is just a few touch-ups, then a bead of silicone around the edges. Um, and yeah, basically job done on this one. And then we go upstairs. And we're in the children's bedroom now. And this one is near enough finished as well. So this one's had a bead of silicone all the way around. It's had a few touch-ups. There are still one or two little grubby marks. We need to get out. But it looks pretty tidy. And we just put little masking tape tabs on the handle as handles until they decide where they want their handles. And again, we've still got the rest of the day just um, for the customer to decide whether they want them or not. 
and for her to um, and for them to decide if they want us to drill them or not. But other than that, this one's near enough complete. So we're going to be packing up soon after all our touch-ups and uh, loading the van. Right, so we're getting to the stage where we're nearly finished now and I'm doing final touch-ups. I touched up the green because the green that I used was a, a Cova Plus vinyl mat and it's not a durable hard wearing paint as such. It's sort of like a wall paint. Um, but it's the color that we wanted and the finish that we wanted. Relatively cheap paint as we only wanted to do a few panels, but because it takes our fingerprints so easily and dirt, what I have here is a decorator's varnish. Quite handy if you're looking to um, finish, for example, if you wanted to do a splashback with wallpaper, for example, um, or you're doing a feature wall where you wanted it to protect the paper, the wallpaper or any matte finishes, then this is the one because this is a matte finish. I've used it a few times. It seems to give me really good results. That was recommended to me from somebody else, a decorator. And I've just been applying it with a fine brush not going to use my chunky four inch purdy, but um, as you can see, I've already done one. You can see the white on this. I'll just show you how it goes on. It looks like it's a bit overkill. It looks like it's going to turn it a different color, but um, it doesn't. It just sort of dries clear. I don't want to go too mad. Um, because ultimately you can see brush marks, even though it's a matte finish, I still want to get nice strokes so it dries, um, dries nicely. And there we go. You can see that one drying already. I've already tucked it around those edges, so that should dry. So that should give me exactly the same finish as what you see now, because we all like, especially the customers, like the matte finish. Um, the look from the matte screen to the birch. And uh, yeah, that's all we're going to be doing now is just one, two, three, four more pieces left to do with that. We've also got this little panel, this little um, lower piece to fit. Um, the customers decided not to put this edging on the front of the lip, you know, the front of the ledge to finish it off. So they're happy for it to all match because the shelves match. These uprights, they're all exactly the same birch edges. And we all thought it'd be a shame to cover them up with this edging that's going to make it look a little bit like eerie. Making up my new my own words here. Um, so yeah, we're nearly done. Sean's literally just touching up a tiny bit of paint on those shelves, sorting out tools. So there we go. Job complete. Two and a half days to get to that stage where we finish three projects. The first two days were three of us here. Um, and the last day today, just Sean and I. Um, first two days were eight till five, and today it was eight till half three. Half three. So let's go over everything. Let's turn the camera around. And there you go, floating shelves all done on this side. Again, problems with the floating shelves were the fixings themselves. Um, the pins getting decent fixing with the 10mm STS drill bit, but we managed it. We did have to get one block connector at the top of that shelf to give that shelf a bit more support right at the top, but it's unseen. Let's work our way around. All finished. Side panel went in nicely, scribed over the skirting rather than into the skirting. The ledge looks really nice, double thickness, and we're happy that we didn't have to edge it because it blends in nicely. We didn't edge it with the birch, so it looks nice and stripy, just like the rest. And the flush handles really set this job off. Really, really pleased with the green too. Got nice joints, a nice little one mil line up against the wall, so no need for skirting. Got a nice little joint there. Had to drill a little 10 mil hole for a lamp inside so these are all soft closed doors so remember we built this post out on top of this corner 100 mil strip to allow us to fix these inset hinges onto and this shelf is no longer an adjustable shelf 
but I think it's better this way just because we got a nicer detail with that corner post as a full piece. In here we cut out for the socket. We sanded that up, the socket's out level, not our cut. One adjustable shelf in there. And I'm not going to touch these doors just because they've been lacquered about uh, an hour ago. Don't want to touch them. So really happy with the overall finish. One of the nicest pieces I've made for a while. Just like the combination of the birch and the green, especially the matte finish. Downside with the matte is that it can get dirty quickly. We've overcome that problem on the green. So there you go, guys. Job complete. Very happy. And uh, we're going to go and have the rest of the day off because we're absolutely knack knackered. So we hope you enjoyed our project. And um, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy. Bye for now.